The <laughs> An ancho nacho. Why has someone not I done that? Oh, oh, also, listen, 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 listen. So this is Mexican week. Just know that these are going to be amazing. Oh, mate, I'm so excited to eat this. Super speedy chili. This is the ultimate speedy chili. And there's a couple of really cool twisty little hacks in there that will just make you go, whoa, that's a good idea. First thing that you need to do is make a chili broth. That sounds proper uh, out there as a concept. Mm. It's one of our little speedy hacks. Ancho chili. It's kind of like a smoked, dried out chili. But that is gonna provide some incredible flavor. Now, if you couldn't find one of these, you could just use a little bit of chili powder. Pop a cinnamon stick in, bay leaves, there's two of them. Just a little bit of brown sugar. Nutritional yeast, our favorite. So this is just instant coffee. This is boiling water, there's 50 mils of it and it's going into the jug. But what we're gonna do is just now mix this up, okay? And we're gonna sit this to one side. Chilies take a while usually, don't they? Yes, but normally you'd be gobbling it, simmering it. Exactly. To let the flavors develop. And that is why we've made this little broth because this is the thing that's gonna give it all of that really rich, deep chili sort of flavor. Pop a little bit of vegetable oil. There's about two, two and a half tablespoons there. One white onion that we've sort of finely sliced. Stir that round and we're just gonna sort of give it about 30 seconds. Pop in a little bit of salt because it will eke out the moisture and help it cook a little bit quicker. Fajita mix, you can make your own or you can buy some. We bought some. We're adding that nice and early because we want it to bind to the onion. So now we're gonna add some new bits, haricot beans. And if you can't find these, don't worry, you can use cannellini beans, you can use butter beans, pre-cut point lentils, which is gonna give a really nice color. What would a chili be without kidney beans? I do not know. It's a teaspoon of lazy garlic. Now you could quite easily use your own garlic clove that you grate it down. And we're just trying to cover those beans and those lentils with that flavor, get it all nicely mixed in with the onion. So what I've got here, this is a, a tin of chopped tomatoes. I'm gonna spin this round now, so we can see what's going on. It's kind of thickened off ever so slightly. The flavors have come together, it looks really nice. We're gonna get our really nice chili broth into here, okay? Just fold all of those bits and bobs into your chili. You just need to let it simmer. And there we are, and that, is a chili. 10 minutes from now, just take that lid off, serve it up with everything else. We're gonna show you how we would serve it if we were at your dinner table right now. Rice first, innit? Surely gotta be rice first. And now for some chili, right? That is looking very delicious indeed. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I reckon this is all about a bit of guacamole now. Now we've got this, a little bit of salsa, very, very good indeed. Tortilla chips, some cheese, just to spread over the top. We're just gonna drizzle over some of this homemade vegan sour cream, which is very good. Squeeze a little bit of lime, and then we're looking at a very delicious bowl of food. Absolutely lovely. Doesn't that look good? Yes. Okay, with a spoon like it, it's even. A bit, yeah. a bit of green on there. Perfect. Oh. Looks delish. Right, cheers. Cheers. Very good. Speedy chili. Done. Mm. The crazy thing about that chili is it tastes like it has been simmering for a long, 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 long time. It looks like it's been sat in like um, like a slow cooker for <laughs> hours and hours. That was an actually a speedy recipe. Hopefully you enjoyed that. It's a quesadilla, the quick quesadilla. This is a delicious dish, and without further ado, we're gonna get into it. A little bit of light olive oil to lubricate that pan. One red onion, which has been sliced. Stir that around. Getting that salt into the onions. These are gonna saute for about five minutes. Pop that garlic in there. There we have our garlic. Give it about a minute, and this red pepper could be roasted, or you could just use a fresh red pepper, as we have here. That's gonna add a real nice sweetness to this whole dish. Next up, we're gonna add some beans, some of these little black beans, stir them through. We've got our chopped tomatoes, and some cayenne pepper. So just stir that through and bring everything together. 
Now this delightful thing is just going to soften for about five minutes, but that is now perfect. So let's add the sweet corn, pop that in there, so that's 100 grams wheat and just a touch of lime. This acidity is going to kind of bring this whole dish together. A big pinch of pepper, some salt, just stir that through and let's give that a taste. Wow. Tastes good to me. I've got a pan, you just want to make sure it's wide enough to hold your whole tortilla. Add a touch of oil. Mr. Tortilla is going into the pan. There he is. Just like that. Pop over some of our dairy-free cheese. The important thing is to just find a dairy-free cheese that you know is going to melt well. You can see that the cheese is starting to soften, which is perfect. Take our filling and pop that over half, just over half of the base of the quesadilla. Next up, little cubes of avocado. They're just gonna go on top of here. And finally, some coriander. We'll check the doneness of the base of our tortilla and just flip it over like that. Fold it in half. Just let everything warm up a little bit. Flip it. Whoop. That is definitely done enough on that side. So we'll give it about another 30 seconds here. This is done. To get a nice sharp knife. Perfect. Look at that. Straight through. Oh, good chopping action. Slice that bad boy through. Make it look a bit arty. Tell the story a little bit. It's time to eat. Oh, oh my mm. god. That is genuinely wow. unreal. Really, really nice and crispy. And it's pretty fiery, right? It's quite fiery, yeah. Oh my god, that is a delicious thing, mm. isn't yeah, it? Really good. Really good. Really good. Mm. This plate of goodness goes by the name of a Mexi breakfast. And traditional fries, yeah, they're great, but this provides a really wonderfully healthy, flavorful, diverse alternative. The first part, which is the uh, roasted red, okay? Cherry tomatoes into the tray, there we go. We have two red peppers. I've got some smoked paprika here, waft it all over the top. Look at that. Throw some uh, salt into this pan. The redness is amazing, right? Beautiful. So you're just gonna get the olive oil and you're gonna drizzle it all over the top. Give it a quick mix because you don't want some of it to be super smoky and some of it to not have any smokiness at all. That is around about done. It just looks amazing. And this now is going into the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for 20 to 25 minutes. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to make avocado smash with butter beans. It's so simple, but it's really wildly effective. So you guys are gonna love it. One tin of butter beans and avocado, half a lime, a little bit of salt, not loads, we get a fork and we just really very, very simply start mashing. Now, if you've got a potato masher, that could work really well. There we go. So it's like a really nicely mashed up avocado paste. The next bit we're gonna do is gonna show you how to make a really, really tasty spinach and mushroom mixture. So what I've got here is some olive oil and that is going into our pan. I've got a shallot here, two shallots, but if you've got a big shallot, use that. If you've got two small ones, that's fine. Plus it cooks down so ridiculously quickly. So there we go, we just give that a quick old mix. We like to put a little bit of salt in with our onion or our shallot so it cooks down quicker. One large clove of garlic that has been finely grated with a microplane. Now it smells delightful. It is high time that we introduce our mushrooms. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful bunch of mushrooms there. We were very lucky to find that. I love the way that they're just gonna disappear now. All the moisture evaporating. Uh, I might have had a nibble on a couple if I'm honest, <laughs> but <laughs> this is cayenne pepper. One and a half teaspoons there. So we're gonna squeeze some lime in here. Squeezy, 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 squeeze. That was a very stingy lime. Hardly any juice in there whatsoever. Give this a nice old stir. So this is spinach. The good thing about spinach is it does exactly the same thing that mushrooms do. It just cooks down really, really nicely. It will be dramatically reduced. It will still be completely full of wonderful nutrients and obviously a lot of great flavor. You can go as wilted as you like, but I kind of like to retain a little bit of bite in the spinach. So I would go as far as to say that that is done. So these, it's just brown toast, but what we've done is chopped it into little triangles. So these are now tortilla toasts. <laughs> How good is that? That's good, right? Oh, and obviously, triangular toast, you decide. <laughs> I'm gonna pop some of these tortilla toasts on our plate, nice and messy, that's it. This is the avocado and bean smash. 
it's packed full of protein, it's obviously got that lovely flavour from the avocado and the lime and a little bit of salt and pepper. Our smoky reds, that's the peppers, tomatoes here as well. Mushrooms and spinach with a little bit of cayenne for Mexican fire. So we've got all the respective elements of um, the breakfast and that is done. That it's simple, quick. it's quick, it's super duper healthy and it's very effective. That just looks incredible. Isn't it? Mexi breakfast from Healthy Bosch, it's a win. Oh mate, You're killing me. Cheers. Oh well. Mm. I just love the meaty texture of the mushroom. Yeah. Uh, do you know my favourite bit here is the tomato and peppers. Yeah. Just so sweet, so rich, and, simple. and so easy. Yeah. So easy. Mm. Oh my god. We are going to be making our famous cauliflower buffalo wings, but. We've never done this before. We're gonna be turning them into tacos. We are gonna be serving them up on some lovely corn tortillas with a little bit of chopped salad and herbs. First up, we are gonna make a ranch dressing. These have been pre-soaked. You can soak them overnight or just do it 15 minutes, boiling them in a pan of plant-based milk. Now we're popping in some garlic powder, a pinch of pepper It's gonna go in, a pinch of salt, and some lemon. It's going to kind of replicate the sourness of sour cream. Blend is on. We've got some chopped chives here and some chopped parsley as well. Pop that in and kind of mix it around. And that'll add a little bit of freshness to your dressing. First up, we have a big head of cauliflower. So we just broke up all of the florets. So without further ado, let's add our flour to a bowl. Onion powder and garlic powder. We've then just added some paprika and some cumin. And then finally, a pinch of pepper. That makes our dry mix, pre-mix it. And then we will add some more oat milk. So this is gonna taste absolutely fantastic. Next up, we have our panko breadcrumbs. Add our cauliflower to that absolutely gorgeous batter. Try and really make sure that you stir it around really well. Okay, wicked. We have got our cauliflower super battered. Yeah. We're just gonna do these small little batches of cauliflower. So I'm basically gonna toss these in those breadcrumbs. So toss them in there, pop them on our baking tray. Look at them. If you have any breadcrumbs left over, you by all means just give them another little sprinkle. So, the pre-roast of these bad boys is going to be 20 minutes at 180 degrees in the oven. So this is our post-roast <laughs> cauliflower wings. So here we have the two ingredients. First up, buffalo hot sauce. And in here, we have some dairy-free butter, which we melted. Okay, we're going to pour these two together. Ooh. Stir that bad boy around. We are going to pour it all over our lovely little wings. This is probably the best bit. Try and pour it over the wings themselves, but then we're just gonna toss them in the sauce as well to make sure they get all the coating and coverage they can. Okay, now I'm just gonna toss these and turn them over and help them just soak up all of that buffalo hot sauce. Now these little beauties are looking great. They, remember they've already been baked for 20 minutes. Pop them back in the oven. They need to dry up and start to crisp and start to brown. That's when you know they're ready. And they've come out looking absolutely fantastic. They really have. We're gonna see if it will taco. Will so it taco? Let's take two corn tortillas. We'll add a little bit of greenery. This is just some, you know, shredded lettuce. And then we have a touch of coriander as well. We will now add our wings. These just, you just know that these are gonna be amazing. Oh mate, I'm so excited to eat this quickly pickled red onions. So that pickle is gonna go on. We've got a little bit of salsa. So I'll just put some of that on the side. Just a little bit. Just a wee bit of salsa. Here it is. Are you ready? Pour that all over. It's gonna look delicious. Oh, there we go. Yes. Beautiful. It's a fully loaded Badman buffalo <laughs> cauliflower taco. Amazing. Oh, look there at that. It goes. This is a beautiful thing. Cheers. Cheers. Tacos. Oh, it's perfect. Wow. 
you've got the absolutely amazing flavor of those cauliflower wings. Fiery, smoky, sweet, naughty, the cooling effect of the ranch dressing, the pickle, all in a taco. Yeah, it just, it's great. It is very, very bonkers, but do you know what? It's really delicious. I mean, look at this, and it's gonna be a lot of good fun. And the first thing that's going in here is vegetable oil or light olive oil. Red onions, nice one. We pop a little bit of salt in with the onions, move the onions around in the pan for around about three, for maybe even as much as five minutes. They're a lot sweeter than they were before. It's just one red pepper. We've chopped it into centimeter cubes and we're just gonna turn that around in the pan. And now I'm gonna add the next things. Three cloves of garlic that have been grated. Boom, chili. Now you could use a red chili, you could use a green chili. And just keep this going um, until the aroma of the garlic is really popped up. So now I'm gonna add some flavor. Ground cumin, uh, ground coriander rather. Cumin, smoked paprika. Now turn this around, as I'm sure you can appreciate and imagine, it does smell utterly unbelievable in here now. Three Maris Piper potatoes. Check this out. So we, the potatoes have taken on the color, everything's sort of married together beautifully, and now we're gonna introduce one tin of black beans. A tablespoon of Tabasco sauce. This pan is completely ready. Put it to one side. Into our empty bowl, we've got rice a small handful of coriander leaves, lime, and they are going to be squeezed in here. Now, a little bit of salt and pepper, just to, um, just to add a little bit of seasoning. You just move this coriander and rice and salt and pepper and lime juice together. We have the raw elements of the burrito samosa, so we can start building them. So it's straight in. Now you don't want to use too much because it needs to it needs to fill, but it doesn't need to be too full. My hands are clean. Make sure your hands are clean too. And we just do this. Fashion it into a triangle shape. Now this is just some dairy-free cheese. We get the melty stuff, and we're just going to pop that here in the middle. We're going to pop in our potato and bean mixture. There we go. So now that is kind of like a triangle in shape, and that is the perfect shape for building the burrito samosa. Check this out. This is just one tortilla that I've chopped into five pieces, and each one of these pieces is very important because it acts as a lid. You pop it on top of the triangle of ingredients that you've just popped in, you squash it down just a touch, you take the bottom piece, you take the side piece, you take the last piece, you flip it over, and you sort of just sort out the, the, the bits and the bobs that are popping out the bottom, and then you bang it on your baking tray. And that is one burrito samosa done. Now this will go into the oven once you've brushed it with a little bit of oil for around about 15 minutes until it's nice and crisp brown. Check it out, boom. There we go. Wow. Think about everything that's inside the burrito samosa. You've got the potatoes, you've got the beans, you've got the rice, you've got the cheese, all coming together to form a wonderful burrito samosa with a little bit of guac. You're onto a winner. Right, I'm gonna go for the guac and I'm gonna pop it on here. I might as well just get a little bit of salsa as well. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know what to say. I'm confused as to what I'm looking at. And let's dig in. While Ian is biting. Oh, Darren's going in. Ooh, I'm going in. I feel in. like you need both the salsa and the mm. right? Yeah. That's an absolute banger. Mm. Love that. Nice. Nice one. Smashed Wait. it. That was good. That was a tasty, tasty one. 